So a few weeks ago, Jen from Savage Industries contacted me through my work at Baker Ripley's Fab Lab Houston. She shared some cool information about a new project called Project Egress. To commemorate the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum is partnering with Adam Savage to build a to-scale replica of the Apollo 11 hatch. After the Apollo 1 capsule explosion, NASA challenged themselves to redesign the hatch allowing egress in under three seconds. Fast forward 50 years to now, and the Smithsonian actually 3D scanned the hatch and Andrew Barth reverse engineered all the parts. They are now reaching out to 45 artists and makers from across the country to build parts and contribute to Project Egress. We were assigned part number 12, the bottom middle belt crank assembly. Each part can be manufactured in any non-perishable material, it just has to be to the exact measurements of the original hatch that we were provided in these drawings. We're here at the National Air and Space Museum. The hatch was assembled yesterday. It's crazy to believe that our piece is gonna be in this in the archive for ever. Here's our piece right there. It was pretty exciting. We got to sign the bottom of it. Check out how we made it. Using these diagrams, I redrew the parts in SolidWorks so that I could import them into our ShopBot program, VCAR. We're gonna come in from three sides, so we'll have to rotate the material. To simplify registering the material in the same spot on the ShopBot as I rotate it, I used a bandsaw to cut it down, so each face is the same exact size, 60 millimeters. I cut a slot into the bed of the ShopBot, the same size as the material, down five millimeters so that the workpiece will sit into the table and it will be in the exact same spot every time. First we're going to slot out the left and right side and then we'll flip it over and come from the top and on the crank we'll slot out these spaces for the connectors and then we'll come in from the left and right. I opened a new file in vCarve and input the 60 millimeter measurement of the board I just cut on the bandsaw and made the mill cut from the machine bed. I accepted that and inserted my model. Once the model was inserted, it gives me uh, orientation preferences. I set it to center. Once that's accepted, it deletes everything below the line and I actually have to make it centered in the model by choosing the material setup. The thickness of the material is there at the top, it's 60 millimeters. I'm gonna get out my calculator, I'm looking at the model thickness there in the center and I took the thickness of the material 60 millimeters and wanted to find the center of it so I divided it by two which gave me 30 millimeters and uh, to put the model in the middle I just subtract the thickness of the model 21.5 millimeters from 30 and I get 8.5 millimeters this is the space or gap above the material so if I put 8.5 into the blank and hit enter You'll see that it moved up and the bottom is at the center of the material. Now I've cut a slot in the bed of the shop bot to help hold the material and that's five millimeters down. So I actually need to add five millimeters to this to shift the model down and compensate for this material being recessed down below the actual surface of the shop bot bed. And I'll do this with all the cuts. I'll move it to the center and then I'll add five millimeters to compensate for that. Once the model is in the middle, I move on to creating my cut paths. Each cut path is gonna be defined by a vector line drawn in 2D. So I kick over to the 2D view and use the rectangle tool to draw a path around what I wanna cut. I only wanna cut the slots, grooves, and holes that are in the side. I don't wanna remove all the material because the project will become unstable. So I draw my rectangle and then I pick my bit and cut path. And I leave a little room in the machining allowance, a fraction of a millimeter so that the finishing path will have some material to come back and remove. Once I accept that, I can preview the cut path and make sure that it's cutting everything I want it is. So I'll move on to the finishing path. To make the finishing path, I'm going to just use the offset tool to create a rectangle on the inside of the previous cut. This will give me a little wiggle room and will prevent the bit from bumping up against the wall as it's cutting. I made a special 
tool path and slowed everything way down for the finishing pass. Probably more than I needed to, but I wanted to be safe and I had time. So I just slowed it down and then uh, previewed both of the cuts and they're cutting everything I want. I still have material on both sides, so I don't have to worry about it becoming unstable as I'm cutting it. The cut pad did take a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but it came out looking really smooth. After I cut both sides, it matched up perfectly. It was great. I flipped it over so that it was the correct orientation and I went to cut the top starting with the roughing pass and then moving on to the finishing pass. Once that part was finished, the second part was the same process. I just started with the bottom and cut the two slots and then moved and cut both sides. I left a little extra room in the middle so that I could come back, cut it out with a bandsaw. The final two pieces were pins that needed to be turned on the metal lathe. They were made of aluminum and they're pretty, pretty simple pieces. Jaime put in the work on the pins and turned them to specs. They were pretty small for aluminum, but they held up great and they were perfect. They fit really snug. I was honored to be a part of this project and it was really fun to see the build live in person and meet all the other makers that contributed parts to this community build. Next time you're in DC, be sure to swing by the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum to check it out.